you might be thinking about becoming a real estate agent, but you're just unsure if the juice is worth the squeeze. Now, there's several reasons that this profession might be appealing to you. You probably saw real estate agents on HGTV. You probably saw the fat commission checks that your real estate agents cash whenever you're purchasing or selling your home. Or you've just seen the real estate prices over the last 10 years just rapidly increase, so you're trying to participate in some of that action. But whatever your reason is for looking into being a real estate agent, we're gonna look at the pros and cons today. So first, let's look at the pros. What are the benefits of being a real estate agent? Well, first, it's flexibility to your schedule. You get to decide, to a certain extent, what hours you wanna work, what days you wanna work, when you wanna take off, and everything in between. However, I do say to a certain extent because it's still your your client that has the ultimate say. If you have a client that's looking in luxury real estate and wants to see a home at 8 a.m. Saturday morning, you better believe that every single agent is gonna be at that showing at 7.30 just to make sure they're not late. So yes, to a certain extent, you have flexibility, but here's what is often overlooked. You have flexibility to your schedule, but this doesn't mean that you don't work. This doesn't mean that you get to bypass the lead generation time blocks that you have. This doesn't mean that you can shirk your responsibilities when it comes to nurturing your clients. This doesn't mean that you just stop your business whenever you want. You have to continue moving it forward. You just have to have that flexibility and discipline to actually do the work in off hours. Because now that you're not a salaried position, that means that you're not gonna be able to collect a check just for showing up. Which brings us to our next pro, and that's the income potential. Being a real estate agent, hands down, has the highest upside potential across any industry, in my opinion. Being a real estate agent has the biggest upside given that there's so much commission that we're talking about. And there truly is unlimited opportunities for you. The harder you work, the more efficient that you work, as you grow your business, as you grow your brand, you're gonna have way more clients than you know how to handle. And that's how large mega teams actually form. There's one singular agent that starts becoming that rainmaker that starts bringing the business for all of the agents around them. So very soon you have these mega teams that do 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 transactions a year. So if you take the average home value in America right now, it's about $350,000. And if you multiply that by a common real estate commission of 3%, you're looking at $10,500 in income for you. You stack a few of those in a row and you have quite a successful business. Now that mindset can get a little bit dangerous if you let it run away from you. So we're actually gonna address that in the con side as well because there's more to it than just thinking, hey, I wanna sell one house a month. If I could do one house a month, that's gonna clear me for the year. I'm gonna be okay with that. That's dangerous thinking, so we'll address that in the con section. The third benefit of being an agent is that you get to learn real estate with somebody else's money. Yes, you get to fulfill your lifelong dream of becoming an investor through somebody else's money and somebody else's resources which is pretty appealing. The other way to learn about real estate investing, the other way to learn about real estate is by actually finding the money to do it yourself. And then we're talking about one, finding the money and two, putting your own money at risk. So not everybody is willing to do that. So if you can find a profession that's gonna teach you real estate and get paid for it, why wouldn't you do it? Truth be told, that's actually one of the reasons that I decided to get my real estate license among others, but this one was also in the equation. I was already an investor prior to getting my real estate license, but after getting my real estate license, so much of my knowledge just started accelerating. I started to learn so much more by working with all of the clients that I was working with. I learned about different types of real estate. I learned about different types of transactions. I learned about different financing. So then I very easily took that information and started applying it to my own real estate investing. So in other words, what I'm saying is that being a real estate agent can be a gateway for you to become a real estate investor if you play your cards right. Now, the fourth benefit of being a real estate agent is actually a double-edged sword, and that is that it has a low barrier to entry. You pay a couple hundred dollars for your real estate school, you pay a couple hundred dollars for your real estate exam, you pay the association, and then you pay your broker fee and you're in business. Now, all of this, depending on the state that you're in, can be accomplished within a month. What other industry is gonna allow you to have a license to perform a certain task that pays so well? Now, I come from the healthcare industry and that's where I cut my teeth, so healthcare, as a whole is one of the most regulated industries in the country, along with banking, along with oil and gas and other industries. But that's where I cut my teeth in. So I am very accustomed to being over-regulated. I'm very accustomed to high barriers to entry. So in my unpopular opinion, 
I actually think that the real estate industry, it has too low of a bar. I think that the industry as a whole, from a licensing perspective, should be expecting a lot more from the agents that they produce. Now, again, that's an unpopular opinion. No real estate agent wants to hear that. However, I do believe that to be true. I think there's a lot of real estate agents out there that are putting their clients in some huge levels of risk, unnecessary risk that is. Because think about it, we're helping clients with the largest asset that they're probably ever going to own. So not only do we need to act in a fiduciary manner, but we also need to have the experience, knowledge, and know-how to better be able to advise every single client. A lot of us don't have that level of experience. A lot of us really don't know anything about a house. A lot of us really don't know what's in the contracts themselves. We were just asked to fill in the blanks or asked the, our clients to fill in the blanks and just kind of go from there. So in some ways we start winging it. So that's huge and that's dangerous. But again, that's an unpopular opinion. It's probably the wrong time to introduce my channel now that I have you in a frenzy, but I'm going to do it anyway. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jaime Resendez and I help real estate professionals exponentially grow their business through actionable content. And I'm on a mission to help reduce the over 80% failure rate for real estate agents. So if you can hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell, that's going to really help us out. All right. So now let's look at the downsides. What are the cons of being a real estate agent? Because not everything can be perfect. Of course, one of the downsides is that there's a high level of competition. This actually goes back to the previous point that we were making of there being a low barrier to entry altogether. Given that the cost and requirements to be an agent are not that high altogether, you can expect a lot of people jumping into the industry. So to put this in perspective, the number of existing homes sold in the US is just over 6 million in a year. And now do the math, there's actually over 2 million real estate licenses in the United States alone. Now granted, not all of those licenses are practicing licenses. A lot of people have them on standby that are not doing real estate. However, that's an alarming statistic. So yes, you will have competition because at this point, every single person in the US is at least two to three degrees separated from a real estate agent. Now, another downside is actually that other side of that double-edged sword, which is the fact that although you do have all this incredible upside that you can be making, you're only making that if you're closing homes. So that means that you're operating in a commission only based environment. There's no milking the clock at 3 p.m. on a Friday here and expect to get the same salary at the end of the week. If you don't do the lead generation, if you don't do the calls, if you don't go out there and show homes, if you don't go out there and list homes, then you're not cashing any commission checks. So you may be working extremely hard, but if you're working on the wrong things that are not bringing you business, then you can find yourself out of business very quickly. So just keep that in mind because commission-based environments can be very cruel. Sometimes you're gonna be swimming in opportunities. It's gonna feel like you're swimming in an ocean full of water. Sometimes it's gonna feel like you're in a desert just hoping and praying that you find a little gusher of water here or there just to make ends meet. Now the third downside to real estate is the unpredictable hours. This is a major con in the equation because the same thing that we wanted whenever we quit corporate America was the flexibility of setting our own schedule. Well, as mentioned earlier, yes, that can be a pro. However, our hours are still unpredictable. You're not gonna always be able to plan ahead, especially as you're starting out because you're gonna need to pay attention to most of the opportunities that come through the door. And if their availability is only in the evenings or in the weekends, then you have to work in the evenings and in the weekends. So we as real estate agents can put parameters and guardrails in our real estate business when it comes to our schedule, but it's not always going to be 100% right. Another con to being an agent is that being a real estate agent can be stressful. You've already invested so much money to get started. You're having to learn the business. You're having to learn about real estate altogether. You're having to learn about people, negotiation, contracts, and everything in between. So there's a lot of stress that comes with that. And as a reminder, we're dealing with one of the largest assets that any individual person is going to own. So their level of stress is already going to be at a 10. You're not dealing with the normal person. So that in and of itself is going to really create a lot of stress, a lot of discomfort if you're not accustomed to working with that type of situation. Remember, when you become a real estate agent, you have made the decision to become an entrepreneur. You have made the decision to start your own business. And a lot of real estate agents don't recognize that until you're in the business. So really take this opportunity to analyze if this business is right for you. I can safely say if you're planning to do real estate just as a part time and are only going to invest five to 10 hours a week 
just whenever you have time, it's going to be quite difficult for you to launch. I'm not saying it's impossible, but at this point, I've spoken to so many real estate agents on a one-to-one -one level about joining our brokerage, which will be linked down below if you want to have a conversation. But one similarity that I continue hearing over and over again from those agents that join but never seem to launch their business off the floor is that they're just not treating this as an actual business. They're treating it more as a hobby.